to listen to climate warnings like that and feel you're powerless, like it's too late to change course, or that you're too small to make a difference against these grand shifts in climate. That's why CNN, we are now launching our new initiative. It's called Call to Earth. Now, the beauty of Call to Earth is whether it's a business or you're a business or you have a business or just you and me, we all have the power to do something about the climate crisis. Little actions make a change. And we'll have plenty of examples right here on Quest Means Business. And now you can go to cnn.com slash call to earth to learn more. One who wants to help is Paul Dickinson. He is the founder of the Carbon Disclosure Project that works to help companies and cities measure and understand their environmental impact. He joins me now from London. The way we, we've got this problem, which you've just heard uh, our first guest, the professor, talking about, which is uh, we're near the tipping point, things are getting bad, they're worse than we thought, and we've heard about this for so long, and I've, I, I don't, you know, I've done what changes I think I can. I'm powerless against a power company or an airline or a shipping line who really, they're the ones who should make changes. Richard, everybody likes to point the finger, but actually, when you point the finger, you, you find it comes back at you. Um, actually, I would argue that these big companies are some of uh, the brightest spots in the whole climate change uh, uh, problem. Uh, we have uh, 8,400 companies reporting to us on their actions on climate change, some of them for more than 10 or 15 years, and they are showing, you know, the power of business, if it concentrates, can get anything done quickly. Right, but I've been to several emerging markets countries in the last few months um, there doesn't there seem to be at, at, at the grassroots level anywhere like the same importance look you know I go to the rest room or the, the break room here and there's a uh, 15 baskets for me to put my litter into in the building where I live if I don't recycle properly I get fined what purpose is it for me doing that here if on the other side of the world all the garbage is going into the same trash can and just going into a waste dump? Well, I'm sure you were probably one of the early people with a smartphone, and you probably had it quite a few years before people all across India or all across China had smartphones, but they've got them now. I mean, uh, another fact that we have from uh, CDP... Over 700 of the world's largest companies have set science-based targets. They're redesigning their entire business model around complying uh, with the Paris Agreement, keeping us away from dangerous climate change. So when you think how fast business moves, spending more than 500 billion a year on advertising, there are companies who are right. positioning themselves to sell people the solutions. I, I agree with you. I don't know any CEO that doesn't have climate change at the top of their agenda at the moment. I sometimes think they're doing it for PR reasons, and I think they're doing it, you know, sort of to keep uh, protesters happy rather than whether they believe in it. But when you have the, the largest seemingly climate denier in the White House and an entire env uh, administration in the US which is not promoting it in the same way that you would wish, what purpose? Well, only one country in the world has indicated their intention to pull out of the Paris Agreement, which is the United States. Uh, perhaps they'll be back in very quickly. I think they're due to pull out one day after the next election. But look, we're all Greta Thunberg now. We all recognise that there's something pretty serious going on, and there are acts of enormous adulthood by people like uh, Bank of England Governor Mark Carney, uh, now Christine Lagarde at the uh, European Central Bank, talking about putting climate change at the centre of monetary policy and the purpose right. of the bank. So we're, we're beginning to see the regulatory authorities okay. positioning Hi, let, let, let's go there then let's go there why we are our guest in our last hour said it was entirely inappropriate my words but entirely inappropriate for for climate change to be at the heart of monetary policy that is not what its goal is its goal is price stability its goal is, is to prevent inflation etc etc 
Well, uh, the goal of uh, price stability, avoid inflation, uh, a strong economy. The only strong economy uh, is an economy that's responding effectively to climate change. Countries across the world right now are deciding between a 19th century economy or a 21st century economy. And those that go towards the 21st century are going to do very, very well. More CDP research with the 215 largest companies in the world right. shows that they've got something like two trillion of opportunities to save money by responding to climate change, reducing energy right. and developing these products for the future. You talked about Greta Thunberg, uh, this, uh, this whole business of flight shaming that now goes on. Um, you know as well as I do that it's a growing, the, the amount of emissions from aviation is fairly static, even though the amount of aviation is growing. Therefore, there are huge steps being taken. Why has aviation become the whipping boy in, in all of this? It's, it, it's got its problems, but probably more than most industries, it's doing something to sort them out. Well, one, yes, that's true, although there are particular issues with air travel. I mean, air fuel is very largely not taxed worldwide, and so you'd be surprised how much uh, of, of the cost of a... a, a how much ga gasoline equivalent uh, a return trip to New York or London uh, actually has. You know, it's about $200 of the cost of the ticket is probably uh, fuel, but if you were in the, in the EU, that would be like putting about $800 worth of fuel in your tank because of the absence of taxes. So just to be aware that if you really want to turn your money uh, in, into... To, to greenhouse gas emissions, uh, air travel is part of it. But of course we have to do that. But there are companies, for example, huge companies like Cisco, have a great suite of products and services, as do many others, Zoom and Microsoft, where people are communicating. I mean, right now I'm not flying to New York. I'm in the London studio. Look, we can do this perfectly well. Somebody's going to make a lot of money, possibly cutting down on business flights, and that's a good thing. We'll talk more about it. Good to see you, sir. Thank you.